Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stop Motion Anime Reviews. I'm Anime, and today we're going to be taking a look at this DC Collectibles, the next two figures in the line of Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, figures. So we have Robin and Raphael. You can find these figures exclusive at your local GameStop or on their GameStop website. I'm really excited to take a look at these two figures. I wasn't planning on getting this set, but it was actually the Robin figure that I really just wanted. And once you get that, you know, you just kind of get that collector's bug where you got to get the rest because it just doesn't look good by itself. And here I am. So I'll probably get the rest. But enough of that. Let's get into this. Let's take a quick look at the outside of the box and get into the figures and see what it's all about. So it comes in the same packaging as that Batman and Leo figure. It's got that big window that curves to the side, the figures inside with the accessories to the side of them. It's got that spot varnish only at GameStop logo that you just can't get off. Uh, the Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo and Robin and Raphael DC collectibles on the side. And I think it says it has 25 pieces, which is three more pieces more than the Batman vs. Leo figure. On the side, you got a portion of the window. On the back, you've got a little bit of a read up on the right corner, and you can also see the rest of the figures that are coming out in this line um, throughout the year. On the other side, you have credits for the two artists that sculpted the figures. So you have Paul Harding, who sculpted Robin, and Jonathan Matthews, who sculpted Raphael. On the top is a Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles spot varnish logo. And on the bottom, you have a barcode, an adders for DC, some warning stuff, and a Nickelodeon logo. Out of the box, but still in the plastic, you can see that Robin's accessories are placed behind them and Raph's are placed to the side of him. And it kind of looks like they're kind of looking at each other, but I don't think that's by design. It's probably just how they accidentally put them in. And here they are out of the packaging, and I really like these figures. These DC collectible figures are usually a little bit more matte than they are shiny or glossy. And I think that Robin figure is excellent. I think he happens to be the best of all the figures so far. Uh, it feels like he would be a little bit fragile being so thin and skinny, but he's been able to hold up. Um, there are some issues, uh, and most of the issues seem to be the same overall from the last set of figures, but Robin seems to do a little better than the rest of them. So let's take these two off the stand and let's take a closer look. Taking a look at the tail of the tape, so to speak, for this figure, you can see that he stands at just about 5 and 7 eighths of an inch which is, equates to about 5 feet 10 inches, which is a good size for a mutant turtle of this kind of stature and build. So measuring out the weight of Raph, you can see he weighs in at about 174 grams, which if you scale that up to kilograms, makes him about 384 pounds, almost 400 pounds. So he's a pretty solid figure. You don't want to mess with this guy. So measuring up Robin, you can see that he stands at just about five inches up to the hair. But if you kind of estimate down from that, the top of his hair to where his head would be, he probably stands at around four and seven eighths of an inch. So he's probably around four feet, 10 inches. And he weighs in at just about 30 grams. So that makes him about 66 pounds. So taking a look at the accessories that comes with Robin, excluding the head and hood that already comes on the figure and the two fist hands, you can see that he comes with the extra head with the hood already up. It has kind of a different expression and it's connected so you can't remove that head from the hood. And he also comes with two extra pair of hands, a more open gripping hand that allows him to uh, hold the grappling gun and also for the staff to go into although it doesn't stay in there very well it's not really tight enough to hold the staff you kind of have to angle in a certain way that allows the staff to kind of stay and he also comes with a slice of pizza now in my previous video i called the little uh, circular object with the bat symbol and the little red button on the top a uh, communication device but i just uh, went through the movie again and watched it and it's actually um kind of more of a, a bomb that uh, they use they use it in that scene when they're fighting um Mr. Freeze and he's freezing everything and it, it kind of like um, melts the ice and stuff like that. So I guess I was wrong. It's not a communication device. But yeah, he like Robin can't seem to hold this thing at all, at least not the way um, Batman does where his thumb is on the button. So maybe Robin can wedge it in between his hands, but it didn't seem like I could get them in. So they just kind of are there. I guess you can place them on uh, figures as if he's already thrown them or something but it doesn't seem to be able to fit into his hands at least for me and here you can see just how he grips uh, some of his um, accessories so the open hands allows him to grip the grappling gun and the one with a little hole between the pointer and um, 
thumb allows him to kind of stick the battering inside. And these batterings, he comes with two of them, and they're actually a little bit smaller than the one that comes with Batman. And he also can hold his staff, or not really hold, but it, it kind of fits into the open hand. That's kind of the same open hand that the grappling hook goes into. So I just want to show that the two batterings that comes with Robin can actually fit into one hand of Batman, the hand that's for um, holding his batterings. So you can actually fit one in between where the um, hole is that uh, his bigger battering goes into, and he can actually hold another one uh, between the, um, the pointer finger and the thumb as well. So he can actually have two in one hand, and you can put the bigger one in the other hand, either as like kind of like a, a blade that he's holding or like maybe he's also going to throw that one too. It's also cool that you can kind of fit like two of them in one hand as well. And Robin's cape, which is actually made of this kind of softer plastic, unlike Batman's, which was a cloth cape, can actually be taken off his body as well. And I guess you could count this as an extra accessory. Although on the back side, it does kind of have these, uh, these two marks on the back. I don't know what they're for, but they are there. And taking a look at the accessories that comes with Raphael, other than the two fist hands at the top that already come on the figure, he comes with two extra set of hands. The middle ones are the side gripping hands. So you can wedge the sharp end through the middle of his finger and he kind of holds it in the stabbing way he does. Although the curved portion kind of stays uh, outside of his thumb grip, so it's uh, actually uh, curved on the bottom. Um, which isn't normally how I think I see him holding it, but that's how they work. And he can also hold it in between his finger, uh, his uh, hand, just normally by the uh, handle. Um, but um, just be careful with that because the these DC collectible figures are made out of this kind of brittle, hard plastic, and it's uh, prone to breaking. So you want to be careful when you put them through. Um, so that he's holding them by his handle and if you do if, if you do use it that way just know that you'll most likely end up chipping or uh, breaking some of the paint away um, slowly if you keep removing them in and out and on the bottom he's got these two more open hands and the thing about them is that you can actually stick the size through this one too and the cool thing is that they actually fit more uh, uh, normally how they usually look where the curved end is actually in his palm and the um, pointing sharp um, middle part actually sticks out through his fingers as well but like I said you want to be careful with that too because this is kind of you're kind of forcing it through those two fingers and you don't want it to break or anything so you just uh, uh, take do it at your own risk you know so what's cool about the way Raph holds his size in his belt is that there's actually these two holes where there's this wrapping in the back of his belt right here and his size just poured into this hole almost as if he has like a piece of wood tied there but in the cartoon it's actually that he he slides them into the wrapping but it looks more like he's got this piece of wood that's just kind of wrapped on the back of his belt and he just kind of stabs them into that piece of wood and I think that actually uh, is a little bit more badass because it kind of goes with the uh, rough tough nature of Raph that he would just have like a piece of wood there that he just stabs his size into and pulls them out when he needs them I think that's kind of cool so Raph also comes with this uh, extra head where he's got this helmet on and you want to be careful when you place this on the um, the peg because uh, you don't want to push down from that top. There's actually like a, a spike on the top. It's actually pretty hard, almost as if it could uh, pierce your skin. So you want to be careful about that. And it is a little bit, um, everything's a little bit stiff like the last figures to put on. So it's a little hard to pop off and pop on. So you just want to be careful you don't put your thumb or something on the top while you try to push down. And uh, it has a different expression, and I think it's pretty cool. I don't think I'm going to display him with his uh, helmet on. I, I just want his uh, normal headband. But it is cool that you have this option. It'd be cool if we were given more facial expressions for the characters, but at least uh, Raph and Robin come with extra heads, whereas Batman and Leo only had the default head that came on the figures. Now, taking a look at Raph's articulation, starting with his head, as you can see, he can't really look down at all. His head is just too big and blocky and the peg just sucks um, he can kind of look up uh, I guess if you want to call it that uh, it's there's a little bit of room for movement so that's okay I guess I mean at least there's something hopefully he has some attitude because he is Raph and looking at uh, his head wobble you can see he has a little bit of that it could be better it would be nice if he had more and he can also obviously rotate 360 degrees on that peg
His arms extend out laterally almost 90 degrees, so that's actually pretty good. He can hinge at the wrist, and you can change the angle of adjustment so you can hinge it in a different uh, direction. He's also got a hinge at the elbow, a single jointed hinge. But he suffers from that ugly elbow design that was on the Batman and Leo figure, where the elbow pad or elbow is kind of uh, protruding from the uh, top part of the arm, so when you bend his elbow, it just kind of sticks out and it looks really ugly. He's got rotation at the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulders as expected. And he's also got that same diaphragm cut that Leo has, but on Raph, it just doesn't seem to work that well. It just seems like it's uh, fused in there and it doesn't move. Uh, you can see him shifting, but I don't think that's the diaphragm joint that's actually shifting him. He's got that same T-bar uh, barbell joint in Leo, so that gives him tremendous range, so he can do the split pretty much all the way. But kicking out forwards and backwards, he is a little bit more uh, limited than Leo was. Leo practically almost could do the split that way, but Raph's a little bit of a bigger figure, so he's going to be a little bit more limited in that section. He's got double jointed knees that allow him to bend pretty much past a little pass over 90 degrees, so that's good. And his feet can't really articulate forward that much, but it can go backwards practically all the way. And he does have ankle rockers, but no peg holes on either side of the foot. Now taking a look at Robin's articulation, as you can see he can look up quite a bit. But to be honest, that's not actually true because if you take a look at the side shot, you can see that his head is pretty much just coming off of the peg and that's just me really trying to force his head up and that's why it's coming off. So he really doesn't really have much range looking up unless you're just kind of ripping his head off the peg. But looking downwards, you can see that he can look down a lot better than any of the other figures, um, but you also have to put a lot of force to force him to look down. And, you know, the pegs on these are just not that great. And I'll show you why in a bit. But um, as far as head wobble and attitude, you can see that he's got pretty good um, head wobble. And uh, he also has 360 degree rotation on the peg, which is to be expected at this point. Now, taking a look at the alternate head, since it does have different articulation, um, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to show his head spinning around 360 degrees on that peg because it's a given at this point. But the difference in the other articulation is that he can look down a little bit. It's not going to be as good as without the hood, but he can do it. He has absolutely no ability to look up at all. And he does have a little bit of head wobble that's actually quite decent. So that's pretty good, actually. Now, taking a look at the problem, the peg just sits really high into the head. As you can see, these pegs are really long and they sit really high. And one of the other problems is also that they're just... Once you pop them on, they're really hard to pop on for most of the figures, but once you pop them on, the peg and the hole inside of the head actually are not really um, really well designed together, so the head actually fits a little bit loose. There isn't really much friction rubbing against the inside of the head to the peg, so the head just won't really stay in place when you uh, hinge them. And that just seems to be the problem. So that's why there is just absolutely no articulation in these heads. Now moving on to the other parts of articulation. For Robin's arms, as you can see, he can extend his arms laterally out about 90 degrees. He can rotate at the wrist, elbow, and shoulders. And he's also got hinges at his wrist that can be readjusted as usual. He's got a single jointed elbow that bends in at 90 degrees. And what do you know? It looks great. It doesn't have any ugly protruding elbows, so that already puts him ahead of the curve as far as I'm concerned. He also has a diaphragm cut that gives him some degree of mobility at that joint, so it allows for him to crunch forwards and backwards just slightly, and he can also sway left and right at that joint, so that's pretty good. And he's also got full rotation at that diaphragm cut. He also has a waist cut right behind the belt that allows him to have a little bit of rotational movement, which is just perfect. It's just the right amount of rotational movement. Now, Robin can't actually do the splits out as far as the two turtle figures, uh, which is surprising because he's so thin. But if you take a closer look, you can see that the bottom part of his tunic actually uh, doesn't allow, it actually acts as a restricting factor to allowing his legs to move out. And you'll see that when he tries to kick forward as well. What's cool is that 
None of these figures have upper thigh cut or anything, but they do have a little bit of rotational mobility where the legs port into the pelvis. And especially on Robin, you can see here that uh, it allows him to have rotational movement where his legs can actually turn in and turn out. So that's actually pretty nice. He can kick forwards and backwards to quite a degree, even though he's restricted by that tunic once again, like I said, but it's actually still pretty good even though the tunic restricts it. And he's got excellent double jointed knees that allows his leg to bend all the way back, only being hindered by his calves. His feet can hinge forward just a little bit, not really, but he can hinge back all the way, leaving that gap just like Batman. And once again, just like Batman, he's got that full rotational ankle spin. Now for some size comparisons, I have here the MCU Peter Parker slash Spider-Man from the Target exclusive 2-pack with MJ. And as you can see, I think it scales pretty well. Um, you know, this is just to give you a look at how it scales with a typical 6-inch line. And Peter Parker is kind of a shorter figure in the 6-inch line. So you can see that they're about the same height, or at least Raph is about the same height. And just taking a look at how they scale with the other two figures that came out in this line, you can see that Batman ends up being the tallest of the figures. And Raph is a little taller than Leo, also a little bit thicker, uh, built more like a tank. And as you can see, Robin is the shortest of the figure. And I think these all look pretty nice together. So thanks for checking out this overview slash review of the two-pack Raphael and Robin figures for the Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon movie. If I had to choose a favorite, I'd have to go with Robin. I just feel like he doesn't have as many flaws or issues as the other three. He doesn't have those ugly elbows that protrude when you bend his elbows. I can kind of deal with that for the turtles, but I'm just not going to bend Batman's elbows. It just looks ugly to me, and it just looks unnatural, and I hate it. But as far as Raphael goes, as you can see, he's darker than Leo. He's a... Um, a bit more like a tank he's built like a tank and I think the aesthetics of him kind of uh, complements that you know he's got the more hard uh, um, elbow and shoulder pads and the way he sticks his size in his back I think it's pretty cool uh, once again I forgot to mention his bandana can't really um, it doesn't really rotate but it doesn't look as weird when you um, have him looking uh, either direction as Leo does. Leo kind of seems to be like he can only look over his right shoulder. If you kind of turn him to the left, kind of sticks out and it looks unnatural. For Raph, it's fine. And I also kind of like how um, the they kind of uh, implement the initials of the turtles into their belts in a very low-key kind of way. So with Raph, there's an R there, but you can't even really tell. And Leo, the little uh, piece of... Uh, blue the little ribbon that he has tied there kind of spells out an l and i think that's kind of cool i think the design choices are kind of cool for um, these figures and like i said i like the way they look i like the blocky nature of them and once again i think these are great looking figures but you know they have articulation issues and that's for you to decide whether or not you want to get them i'm not as bothered by it since i'm really just going to be posing them in kind of these uh cool poses not really uh, dynamic poses or anything so thanks for checking this out, and if you liked it, uh, just hit that like button for me. It really helps me out, and uh, you know, get subscribed so you don't miss any of my content. So I guess I'm out with that. I'll see you guys later.